Hey guys, so this week we're going to be taking a look at the Nomadic Travel Pack. And if you remember a while back, I did an in-depth review of the, a lot of the features of this bag and just kind of went through what it would be like to use this as a travel bag. However, during that video, I mentioned how much I enjoyed using the bag, not only as a travel bag, but also as a daily bag. And I promised that if I got a few requests on the video to do a separate daily bag video, I would go ahead and do that. And so it's taken me a little while to get to it, but the point of this video is to kind of go through and showcase what it would be to use this bag on a day-to-day -day basis. And as I mentioned during the original review, I absolutely loved using it not only as a travel bag, but as a daily bag. I was really impressed with you know how well all the features translated between using it for either purpose. So because I went into such depth on a lot of the features in the travel bag video that I did originally for this, I won't be going into as much depth on you know some of the features that overlap a little bit. So I'll make sure to link to the previous video if you guys wanna see a more in-depth review View of this bag as a travel pack or on some of the features that we covered the first time around definitely go ahead and check that out but in the original video that I did for the travel pack I did mention that this backpack includes a double-sided packing cube and so this thing has been a really cool little accessory as well and I promised that I would do a follow-up video on this so I thought this would be a good chance to just talk a little bit about the packing cube as well and just showcase you know how much it can hold and how well it works for trips and so I'm just really excited to just be revisiting this bag this has been one of the coolest bags that I've tested in recent memory so let's just go ahead and dive in and take a closer look at the nomadic travel pack and the nomadic packing cube so as I mentioned a little bit earlier, since I went so in depth on a lot of the features of this backpack when I did the travel pack video, I may just skim over a few of them and not go into as much detail in this particular video. The focus for this video will be on the use of this bag as a daily bag. So when you're thinking about bags that might work well as travel bags or daily bags, it's always the trickiest thing is always kind of the size. If it works well as a travel pack, typically it's going to be a little bit too big to use as a daily bag. So that's something I've seen with something like the Air Travel Pack, which is still my favorite pure travel pack, but it is a little bit big to use as a daily bag. And then vice versa, if you have bags that work well as daily bags, they're not quite big enough to travel for a long period of time as a travel pack. So something like the Timbuktu Jet, which we reviewed a while back, you know, is a really nice bag for like a weekend trip, but it won't be able to hold that much. Another similar bag is the OnePlus Travel Backpack, and that you know holds a good amount of stuff for a weekend trip as well, but for something longer, like a week or two week trip, it can get a little bit limited. So one thing I love about this bag is just how well it kind of balances that line. So it can expand 10 liters to about 30 liters if you wanna travel for an extended period of time, but when you get to your destination, you can compress it, and it compresses down to 20 liters, which is you know really amazing and just, even though that's still slightly big for a daily bag for some people, I think it's just, it compares really well to other daily bags that I've used in the past. So one thing I wanted to showcase here is how this bag kind of looks side by side to a few other bags that I like to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first one I have here is the brand new Air Tech Pack, which I think is an awesome tech bag. It's really great for daily use, has tons of organization, is a really stylish bag. And we did an in-depth review for this just a few weeks ago, so I'll make sure to link to that below if you wanna get a closer look at the Air Tech Pack. But as far as how it compares to the Nomadic Travel Pack, the size is actually really close. As you can see here, they, they're about the same height the Nomadic Travel Pack and the Air Tech Pack are pretty close in thickness. So overall, you know, they're very similar with the added benefit for the Nomadic Travel Pack that it can expand into a larger bag. So the fact that Nomadic was able to make something that's small enough to match something like the Air Tech Pack, which was designed from the beginning to be just a daily bag for you to carry all your essentials and your tech gear and things like that. Um, and the fact that they're so similar in size shows just how well the Nomadic Travel Pack can work as a day bag. So I was really impressed when I put these two side by side that they're so close in size and that the Nomadic Travel Pack is actually able to compress down that small. So that's a really, really cool benefit. For additional size comparison sake, I also wanted to kind of hold up the Nomadic Bag next to the GORUCK GR1, which you know for a long time has been kind of my favorite daily carry bag. I'll swap out between a lot of them, but I typically end up coming back to the GORUCK GR1 every once in a while. And you know, this is the smaller GR1, the 21 liter version. So as I mentioned, the Nomadic Travel Pack compresses down to 20 liters. So again, very similar liter size for both of these bags. Obviously the uh, GORUCK is empty right now, so it's a little bit hard to get a gauge for the thickness. GORUCK bags on the whole are pretty slim. So it's gonna be a little slimmer than the Nomadic Travel Pack, even when holding the same amount of stuff. But as you can see, the height is pretty much the same. 
and and you know like overall again just showcasing how well the nomadic pack as far as size works as a daily bag you know just kind of going around the rest of the outside the nomadic travel pack has you know a really great top handle very comfortable sturdy it also has two nice sturdy handles on each side that make it really easy to kind of load into an overhead compartment or if you want to put the straps away and carry it like a briefcase if you want to see a little bit more information on the strap system definitely check out the previous video that we did for this backpack and so the bag itself as we previously showed has two water bottle compartments so I have here the same water bottle that I've used in all my other daily bag videos. And the cool thing about these compartments is that they have magnetic clasps to help the bag keep its really kind of uh, minimalistic and sleek profile. The straps and the back paneling of the bag are super comfortable. This is something that impressed me a lot when I was testing this out as a travel pack. It's super comfortable to wear. The straps have a really nice padding. They're not too wide, not too thin. They have an adjustable sternum strap. The bag even includes removable waist straps, and we showcased the waist straps in the previous video, and those are really comfortable as well. The back paneling itself is very comfortable as well. It's got, you know, it's got really, really kind of soft padding here. It feels like almost like a gel material, and it's nice and elevated, so there's a path here to provide a little bit of airflow to help reduce moisture as you're walking around. One thing that a viewer noticed in the last video, which I thought was a really good point worth mentioning, is that the back paneling and the straps have a different material. So the straps have kind of this more um, kind of aerated, meshy type material. So it's, it's nice and padded, but it has kind of like the little holes to provide a little bit more airflow and help keep moisture down a little bit. Whereas the back paneling is a little bit softer and more comfortable on your back than the, strap, than the material on the straps would be. The only thing is that I don't think it provides quite as much airflow as the strap material would. So it's a little bit of a trade-off between kind of the softness of the gel here that's included and then, you know, preventing the moisture from building up. Overall, it's really, it's so comfortable that I just don't think it's too big of an issue. One thing that I forgot to mention when I did the original video for this bag is that there's actually a pass-through here, which is connected. So it's got a little piece of Velcro back here and it has a slot for you to actually put this on your suitcase handle. So if you're traveling with a carry-on uh, suitcase and you're also gonna be using this as kind of your daily bag, you can actually, Put, you can actually use this slot to lay the backpack on your suitcase. So if you don't want to carry it as you're moving around the airport, you just want to lay it down. It's going to stay nice and secure on top of the suitcase. And it's just another nice kind of bonus feature that the backpack offers. So the laptop compartment, as we saw in the previous video, lays down completely flat. So this is a pretty common feature in a lot of travel backpacks. But as a daily bag, this is also not the most convenient way to access your laptop. But thankfully, that you don't have to. The bag certainly works well as a top loader as far as the laptop compartment. So as I've been using this for daily use, what I'll typically do is just open it up here at the top to leave just enough space to be able to reach in. It's still very easy to just remove the strap that's holding the laptop in place, quickly grab your laptop, and you're able to start working very easily. So I love that it works well, both when it's laid down flat and also when the, when the compartment is closed. The compartment itself is felt lined to help prevent against scratching. It's elevated off the ground so that you can't hurt your laptop if you happen to drop your bag or something like that. And it's, it fits at least a 15 inch laptop, possibly even something a little bit bigger. The laptop that I have here is 13 inch, so that fits really great. But just, I really love how the laptop compartment was implemented overall. On top of the laptop compartment, you can definitely access the tab, the separate tablet compartment that it offers. So this is another great compartment that you know has that really soft kind of felt lining to prevent uh, any scratching. It's got plenty of space for it, probably like the nine or 10 inch iPad. You can't put a pro in there, I don't think. Currently what I have in here is a iPad mini two. The, the compartment also includes a separate sleeve that's probably good for documents or like a folder or something like that. I have actually been using it to hold my portable standing desk from Levitate, which I've shown in a few of my videos so far. And you know, that compartment, it works really well for that purpose. It's not padded or anything like that. It's still nice to have this option to kind of organize your stuff a little bit more. So we reviewed the pockets in depth in the previous video. I'm still gonna go through and just talk about the items that I have here because as I mentioned, they are kind of more focused on daily use as opposed to traveling. At the top, there's just a quick access compartment, which you know I love in having in daily or travel bags. This is a great spot to just grab something really quickly that you need. So I have my charger in here. The, the pocket itself has a really soft kind of felt lining as well. So it's good for any delicate items to help prevent scratching. And a cool thing is that it also has a little pass-through for a power cable. On the front, there's also another kind of larger organizational compartment. I really like 
that the pocket itself got kind of these little uh, felt guards on the side that allow you to really see into the whole pocket at once. You know, just starting off with the with the back part of this pocket, it has kind of four meshy uh, organizational compartments, kind of slip pockets that you can use for a variety of, of items. So here in this first one, I have my Apple Magic mouse, and I actually don't have anything in the pocket in front of that. On the other side, I have my MacBook charger, so I have the USB-C to USB-C cable, and I also have uh, the power block, and they both fit in there very nicely. On the bottom of the compartment, there's kind of a little divider, very soft. There's no padding here or anything like that, but it's a larger divider, which is actually perfect for something like a notebook. So what I have here currently is just a full-size moleskin notebook. On the flap of the compartment, there's a lot more organizational options. So at the top, there is a lockable RFID safe compartment. And so this goes about halfway down the flap. So in here, I currently just put in my wallet. I also included my USB-C kind of dock that has all the different ports that I need on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm using my newer MacBook Pro. And then on top of that, I just also have the lock that is included with the backpack to kind of lock this compartment if you have sensitive items in there. So another nice value add from Nomadic. And then on the bottom, the, the bag has a few pockets to hold pens or styluses or pencils or anything like that. I just have a Sharpie in there for now, but there's two compartments for, there's two of those compartments. And then there's some more kind of uh, flexible meshy slip pockets here on the bottom that you know I use for cables. They, they can probably hold a portable battery or something like that. So in the first one, I just have my retractable HDMI cable. And in the, the one next to that, I have kind of this multi-port cable that has two lightning connectors, a USB-C port, micro USB. And I really love that these are retractable. And, and you know, they're very flexible and you can use them for a lot of different stuff. And behind those pockets, there's actually one more additional zippered compartment to just kind of hold maybe some smaller items that, that you might have floating around. So in here, I just have a fidget spinner. And I also have a kind of adapter for micro SD and SD cards for uh, my MacBook. So it has a USB-C connector and a USB connector as well. One thing to note is that the pocket itself is kind of slim. So you wouldn't be able to put anything too, too bulky, especially using both sides of the compartment. So before moving on to the main compartment and kind of the rest of my daily use items, one thing I want to talk about is the zippers. So uh, as we mentioned in the original video, there are the, a really cool thing about the bag is that most of the zippers are lockable. One thing that viewers pointed out in the original video, which I didn't mention, but I think is a great point, is that the bag has a little bit of a security flaw, I guess. So for the main compartment, there's several different ways that you can access it. You can access it from the top so that you can grab something really quickly. You can lay it down flat so that you can see everything at once and just to provide for easy packing. And then another cool feature is that you can open the zippers from the bottom so that you can grab items really quickly without actually opening the full pack. I really like that feature, but the one problem with that feature is that there's no way to lock this bottom zipper. So if you locked the zipper on the main compartment, you wouldn't be able to open it from the top necessarily, but this zipper is still very much open. So it seems almost silly to kind of lock it and then leave this part open because, you know, if you were walking and somebody came up behind you, they could potentially kind of lift this up, still reach in and pretty much access anything that's in the bag and, you know, close it up. And the lock, the, the lock zippers at the top would have no effect. So, you know, it's a little bit of a trade off for me. I, I do like the convenience, but it is something to be aware of and maybe something that could be addressed in a future version of the bag. So now moving on to the main compartment, as we just talked about, there's tons of different ways that you can actually access the main compartment, you know, and I really love that flexibility. So if you have like a sweater at the top of the bag, you can access it from the top and, and it also lays flat and you can access it from all the sides with all these cool zipper mechanisms. So for the, just to showcase the items that I currently have, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down flat so you can see the whole thing open at once. So just going through the main items in the bag, what I currently have here is my BagSmart cable organizer. I have my in-case accessory pouch. I have my Beat Solo Wireless 2. I also have just a folder to keep some documents and receipts and things like that organized. And then, as you can see, the rest of the bag is you know, pretty empty. There's a lot of leftover space. Just looking at the back of the bag, you can see the zipper compartment that you can use to separate out your clothes if you're using this as a travel pack. And so this is, this is also one point where I wanna mention between the nomadic backpack and the travel pack. You know, this is the travel pack. The, the backpack itself, 
also opens down flat. It's very similar to this kind of layout in the main compartment. The main difference is that instead of having this kind of zippered area for your clothes, the laptop compartment is in the main compartment as opposed to having a separate area that you can lay flat. But also it has a Velcro panel on the back that you can use to swap out a variety of kind of accessories that Nomadic has. And so I don't really find a lot of value in having those swappable panels or this Velcro panel. And I also like that the laptop compartment on the travel pack is separate from the main compartment. So I've gotten a few questions about which one is better, if I can do a comparison between the backpack and the travel pack. But personally, I just, I don't think the backpack is nearly as good a deal as the travel pack. So if you're kind of in between the two, I definitely recommend you just go Go ahead and get the travel pack moving on to the rest of the main compartment as you can see it has four kind of uh, mesh and elastic just kind of slip pockets these don't have zippers or anything but it's good for just tossing items in really quickly one of these on the bottom holds the keychain holder that's expandable so as we saw in the last video you can use that to kind of open doors or just to pull out your keys without taking your bag out and then the rest of the pockets you know you can use for a variety of items and one of them i just have my gopro hero 3 plus and you can put, you know, maybe a charging block for your laptop if you don't want to put it in the front compartment like I had it. Another thing that the bag includes is kind of this hard shell sunglasses case that has a little bit of a soft kind of pouch on the inside so that you can just use your sunglasses in there and you don't have to worry about them getting scratched or crushed. And I like how this is removable. So you can choose not to use it if you if you want to just save a little bit of space. This is a little bit bulky. It's also nice that because that this was made to kind of fit in any of these four pouches. So if you pack a certain way and you want to move where this is actually located in the bag, you have plenty of flexibility to do just that. Moving on to the flap of this main compartment. There are two kind of zippered mesh compartments that are nice and elastic. So if you have something a little bit bulkier, it'll probably fit in here. But it's also nice that you can kind of see what's going on in each of the pockets. And so here on the bottom one, what I just have is a, my portable external hard drive. In the upper compartment, the first thing I want to showcase is just, as I mentioned, if you put a battery in this compartment, it can actually pass through to the top accessory compartment. So if you have your phone there, uh, you can plug it in to, to the battery so that it's charging as it's stored on the top compartment. So here's that pass through from the inside. So what I have here is a new item that I've been using recently called the Blue Pot. And this is really cool because it's actually a Bluetooth speaker that's also a portable battery. So as you can see, it has two USB ports so that you can plug your devices in. And it's also a pretty potent little Bluetooth speaker considering how slim it is. And so overall, as you see, you know, this, this bag easily held all the things that I carry with me on a day-to-day -day basis, provides plenty of organization for everything that I would need it to, and I think the size is really good. The last thing I want to talk about is the packing cube that Nomadic includes with the travel pack. I briefly mentioned this in the last video that I did and promised that I would do a follow-up. And, you know, I was, I was really curious when I first saw this because it has two sides and it's also, uh, it also has an option to compress the pack down to help keep it a little bit slimmer. And I was really curious about you know, how much it could hold because it's about the same size as the smaller packing cube that you've seen in all my other travel videos. So I just wanted to see how they compared against each other. And so as you can see in the footage here, the Nomadic packing cube easily holds all the items that I typically carry in my smaller packing cube. In fact, I didn't even have to uncompress it or use the second side. So just by using one side, the Nomadic Packing Cube can easily hold the items that I would typically carry in a packing cube of this size. However, because there was so much space left over, I was curious as to how much I could actually fit. And so what I did is I actually went ahead and, un and expanded the cube out. So as you can see, what I went ahead and did is put in a few shorts, which are a little bit bulkier. Typically what I have in my smaller packing cube is like underwear, socks, and t-shirts and things like that. But I wanted to, to just really test out its capacity. So what I've gone ahead and done is put on the bottom, on the bottom section of the packing cube, I actually put three pairs of shorts, which are pretty bulky. And as you can see, I'm just kind of laying these down flat. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of rolling clothes. And you know, the compartment itself easily held all three shorts. And so as you can see before compressing, you know, it's really thick. That's one thing that I wasn't crazy about with the packing cube is that it gets, it gets very thick. So typically when I pack my travel packs, I like to keep everything as flat as possible 
just because I feel like it allows a lot more to fit. So, you know, because this isn't that long and it's a lot and, and it gets pretty bulky, I feel like it wouldn't be the most efficient use of space. But the nice thing is that you can compress it down a little bit using kind of this middle zipper. So as you can see, when you zip that up, it, it pushes everything together a little bit. I feel like it didn't save that much space when I actually compress it down. It's still pretty thick due to the amount of things that I put in the packing cube. But it's just really impressive how much I was able to put in here. And even though it's a little bit bulkier than I would like, I think it would it'd still be a great way to organize my clothes and I think it's an excellent travel accessory. And, and the best part about it is that if you get the travel pack, this comes included. So you can buy it separately on Nomadic site. I think it's about 20 or $30. On its own, I don't think the pack cube is that great of a deal, but the fact that it's thrown in with the travel pack uh, I think is is awesome. So overall, this bag continues to impress me with just how many features it offers, how comfortable it is to wear, and just how well it works as both a daily bag and a travel bag. The bag itself can be purchased from Nomadic site for about $220. You could also purchase it on Amazon, but if you do purchase from Nomadic site, I've included a coupon code below that gives you 15% off, so I definitely recommend you purchase it directly from Nomadic because with 15% off, it comes out to about $185, $190 or something like that, and at that price point, the bag is a great deal. And on top of the fact that the bag is included at that price point, it also includes the packing cube that we looked at. Talked about this a little bit during the video, but I definitely recommend the travel pack over the backpack. I've had a few requests to review the backpack, but I don't think I'll be reviewing that on the channel just because I really don't see the point. You know, I, I personally think that the Nomadic travel pack is a much better deal. I really like a lot of the features that it includes better, and I just like that it will be good for multi-purposes. So the backpack itself is really only good for daily use, and, it, and I'm not a big fan of the uh, changeable panels that it comes with. And so overall, I just prefer the travel pack. So if you're kind of on the fence, I definitely recommend you just go with the travel pack. But if you guys have any additional questions, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.